Hello, it's Bill Jones, proprietor of Kinetech Pro Audio, also known as Joe Electro Online, and today I want to show you the Kinetech T4B tester uh, that I built some years ago and the piece of equipment that is used to test uh, all of the Kinetech T4Bs that are produced, as well as uh, Universal Audio and URI uh, T4Bs that I rebuild for people. The tester consists of two pieces. Uh, this piece that you see here is the unit that contains the socket that the T4B goes into and a little meter that shows how hard I'm driving the EL panel, although that's really just for looks because uh, the computer that the uh, unit attaches to tells me exactly how hard I'm driving it. The other piece is a uh, PC compatible computer with some custom software that I wrote and the unit is actually capable of doing a number of different tests. It has a built-in frequency generator uh, that is under computer control and I can control the frequency and the amplitude of the signal and also the duration of the signal. <clears throat> it basically performs two different tests that I do all the time. Uh, one is the pulse test which basically measures the recovery time of the photocells in the T4B unit. And the other test that I do is the dynamic range test. And that tests the match of the cells during the compression phase of operation. Okay, so we are going to test three different uh, T4Bs today. The first is a minty fresh Kinetech T4B. The next is a uh, reissue Universal Audio T4B. And the third is a vintage T4B that I keep around as my reference cell. So we'll see how these three stack up and we'll talk a little bit about the test results. Okay, so let's try the, ten the Kinetech first. Go ahead and plug it in here. Go over here. F1 starts the pulse test. All the parameters are correct. Hit F10 to start the test. We'll put in uh, Kinetech. Hit enter. And you'll see, well, you really can't see it, but the sample light is flashing there as the computer takes samples. And I should say that this is a uh, just a standard Kinetech uh, T4B, not something I built especially for this test, just one I took off the shelf. And that's what the uh, response looks like. Uh, and you can see that the match of the cells, oops, you can see that the match of the cells is almost exact. Uh, so, let's now go to the uh, Universal Audio reissue. Plug that in. Okay, over here, this is the UA that we're testing. Samples are counting up. And now we have two curves. And you'll notice that the curves on these are very similar. The universal audio is a little bit faster than the Kinetech and the match on the two cells is not quite as good as the Kinetech. It's still pretty good though. Okay, let's go back and now let's test the uh, the classic cell, the, uh, the classic T4B and let's see how this thing does. Okay. And we'll call this one URI. This, this uh, T4B was made in 1977. It has been rebuilt though. I had to put a, uh, a modern EL panel in it. And we'll talk about that here in just a minute. Because when we do the dynamic range test, you'll see, uh, you'll see uh, what I'm talking about. Okay, now, as you'll notice, uh, this classic unit the pulse response 
the resistance drops down further. That's because this EL panel is putting out more light, which is not necessarily a good thing. And then you'll see that the uh, response to, of the unit to the light is even slower than the Kinetec and the UA. That is partially because it was hit with more light because of a more efficient EL panel, but it's also partially because the cells are slower, slightly slower. And that is a curve that I pretty much try to match with my T4B units. Unfortunately, modern cells are not quite that slow and still have the dynamic properties that I look for. So let's go over and let's now, now that we've done the pulse test, let's go back and let's do a dynamic range test. Now I do need to modify one parameter here. I need to change the pulse duration to 0.1 seconds. Okay, let's put the uh, Kinetec T4B back in and we will then do a dynamic range test. As soon as I can figure out how this goes in. There it is. Okay. And you'll notice that this is a uh, this is a completely different uh, uh, response. What this does is it slowly varies the voltage on the EL panel from about 20 volts all the way up to 100 volts and then measures the uh, response of the photocells and you'll see that the EL panel voltage, well that wasn't really quite enough time. Okay, so there's the curve on the new Kinetec and you'll notice that the match on the cells is almost exact again. This is because of the testing procedures that I've put together which took hours and hours and hours to finalize. Uh, I might do another video about how that's done at some point but it's a very uh, long and drawn out procedure. Okay, let's test the uh, Universal Audio Reissue. And this time we'll look at the, uh, the little LED indicator that shows the, uh, the voltage and you'll see that the voltage is gradually being increased. And that is the response of the UA. And you can see that the response is very similar but that the uh, this is the uh, the key difference. The slope of the UA cell is steeper than the slope of the Kinetec cell. And that's something that I have really worked hard to achieve. That the slope here in the strong compression phase of the, uh, of the curve is more gradual. And that uh, results in a smoother uh, compression and that's something that uh, I really took a long time to try to figure out. The, uh, the difference turned out to be in the electroluminescent panel. Okay now here is the vintage uh, URI cell, uh, I'm sorry URI T4B that was built in uh, 1977. So let's uh, go ahead and test this one and you'll see that the voltage is uh, slowly being uh, increased all the way up to around 100 volts. And take a look at this curve. Now this curve is not desirable at all. Let me tell you why. The brand new EL panel, which is the one that most people are using in their reissues nowadays, comes on way too soon. It comes on at around 20 volts and then look at how steep this curve is. This is why I don't use the EL panel that almost everybody else uses. This, this is really much more of a limiting action than it is a compression action and is not at all the way the classic T4B and T, uh, I'm sorry, the way the classic T4Bs uh, used in the original LA2As and LA3As reacted. So uh, this is why uh, you should buy a Kenetec T4B and why I've spent so much time trying to get these things right is really uh, to get this response curve here in the dynamic range and that uh, results in a smoother uh, sweeter sounding compression. Okay we might do some more uh, video later but that's it for now. Thanks for watching.